When we think of medieval log cabins, most of us picture something rustic simple wooden walls, a crackling fire, maybe a thick fur rug on the floor. What rarely comes to mind is the fact that many of these structures were engineered with far more intelligence and efficiency than we assume. Medieval builders weren't just stacking logs and hoping for the best. They developed heating techniques that kept these small homes warm through freezing winters, long nights, and brutal storms without the help of modern insulation, gas heaters, or electric appliances. And believe it or not, many of these forgotten techniques outperform some modern cabin designs today. So what exactly did medieval builders know about heating log cabins that we've somehow forgotten? The truth is, their knowledge came from survival. When your only protection from the winter cold is the building you live in, you learn fast. You learn what works. You learn to use everything wood, stone, earth, airflow, smoke, moisture, even sunlight to your advantage. Let's start with something most people overlook, the way medieval builders place their cabins. Unlike many modern cabins built for views or property lines, medieval cabins were positioned for warmth. Builders knew that the sun was a free source of heat, so they placed cabins facing the direction where sunlight hit most during the day. In many regions, this meant a south-facing entrance or window. The low winter sun would shine directly into the cabin, warming the interior naturally. Today we call this passive solar heating, but medieval homeowners simply saw it as common sense. But sunlight wasn't the only thing they used. Wind was just as important. Cold northern winds could steal heat from a home faster than a fire could replace it. Medieval builders carefully positioned cabins beside hills, rock formations, or dense tree lines that acted as natural shields. These shields broke the wind, protected the walls, and reduced heat loss. Many modern cabins skip this entirely, sometimes built in open clearings that look beautiful but leave them exposed to bitter winter winds. Next, let's look at the structure itself. Medieval log builders understood something we often forget. Wood is an insulator, but wood works best when it's stacked properly. Logs weren't chosen randomly. They were thick, dense, and carefully notched to lock together. The tighter the fit, the less air leaked out. Gaps in medieval walls were filled with a natural insulation material called chinking. Unlike the synthetic versions we see today, medieval chinking was made from a mix of clay, moss, straw, fibers, and sometimes animal hair. This mixture acted like a thermal sponge it absorbed heat during the day and released it slowly at night. It also expanded and contracted with the weather, sealing the cabin naturally. Some of the oldest surviving log cabins show chinking packed so tightly that wind couldn't pass through even at high speed. In modern times, air leaks are a major issue in log homes, causing cold drafts that force the heater to work over time. Medieval builders knew drafts were the enemy, so they eliminated them using earth-based, breathable sealants. Now, let's talk about floors. Modern cabins often have elevated floors with cold air circulating beneath them, leading to chilly toes in winter. But medieval cabins rarely had cold floors, and the reason is brilliant in its simplicity. Instead of elevating the structure high above the ground, medieval builders often used packed earth floors or stone bases with thick straw layers. Earth retains heat remarkably well and releases it slowly, acting as a thermal battery. In some regions, builders even used a technique similar to underfloor heating. They dug shallow trenches under the cabin, filled them with stones, and let the fireplace warm those stones throughout the day. By night time, the stones radiated heat upward, gently warming the floor and the air above it. This was essentially a primitive version of radiant heating a method still used in luxury homes today. Speaking of fireplaces, medieval heating systems were far more complex than a simple open flame. In fact, their fireplaces were sometimes more efficient than some modern designs. Medieval builders understood that heat rises, so they built fireplaces with wide, deep bases and narrow chimney necks. This kept the heat circulating inside the room longer before it escaped upward. Some cabins even had built-in heat reflectors made from stone, clay tiles, placed behind the fire. These reflected warmth back into the room 
instead of letting it dissipate into the walls. Another incredible innovation was the use of thermal mass. Builders used heavy stones, bricks, or clay near the fireplace to absorb heat during the day. As the fire died down at night, those materials slowly released stored heat, keeping the cabin warm until morning. This is the same principle used in modern masonry heaters except medieval people did it with nothing more than local materials and experience passed from generation to generation. But medieval builders had another trick on we barely use today, controlling airflow. They understood that a cabin needs to breathe to avoid moisture buildup, mold and smoke. But too much airflow would flood the cabin with cold air. So they used adjustable vents built high on walls or near the roof line. During the day, heat from the fire would draw cold air in from the vents, circulating warmth throughout the cabin. At night, those vents were closed tightly to lock in heat. This controlled ventilation balanced comfort, warmth and safety without any machines or electricity. Now let's talk about one of the most forgotten medieval heating secrets, the use of double-layered walls. Some medieval log cabins were built with an outer wall and an inner wall. The space between them sometimes as narrow as a few inches was filled with dried leaves, moss, straw or sawdust. These natural materials trapped air, creating an insulation layer similar to the fiberglass insulation used today. When kept dry, this organic insulation was remarkably effective. Other cabins used something even more clever, turf roofs. These roofs weren't just for looks, they were powerful insulators. A thick layer of soil covered with grass sat atop the wooden roof beams. In winter, the soil stayed surprisingly warm, preventing snow from melting to fast and reducing heat loss. In summer, it kept the cabin cool by blocking excess heat. Modern eco-homes are rediscovering this method, calling it a living roof, but medieval builders mastered it centuries ago. We also can't ignore the role of compact design. Medieval cabins were intentionally built smaller than many modern log homes. Instead of wide open living spaces that waste heat, medieval homes used low ceilings, narrow rooms and lofts to trap warmth. Heat rises, so loft areas were ideal sleeping spaces, staying warm even when the fire burned low. Many people today build tall spacious cabins for aesthetics but they end up harder to heat because warm air escapes upward and outward. Let's talk about clothing and bedding too. While this isn't part of the cabin structure, it was crucial for warmth. Medieval households used layers of wool, fur and woven textiles not just on their bodies but also on walls and beds. Heavy tapestries acted as insulation on interior walls, reducing heat loss. Bedding was layered thickly, often warmed by stones heated near the fire. This helped maintain comfort, even on the coldest nights, without relying solely on the cabin's heating system. Another forgotten practice was the use of indoor partitions. Instead of one large open space, cabins often had multiple smaller areas separated by wooden walls or curtains. Smaller spaces trap heat better and require less energy to keep warm. Today, Open floor plan cabins look beautiful, but they leak heat quickly and unevenly. Medieval families knew better they heated the spaces they needed and closed off the ones they didn't. Let's explore a fascinating aspect of medieval heating that most people have never heard of, the smoke loft. In some cabins, builders purposely designed the roof to collect smoke in the upper area before it escaped through the chimney. This wasn't just for ventilation. 